My dear respective brothers and sisters, it has been authentically reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأ Islam started as something strange and it will come back to being something that is strange and glad tidings, Tuba to those who are strangers. The scholars of Islam, they explained what Tuba means. Some of them, they mentioned that this is a tree in Al-Jannah that they will be granted. So the companions, they asked, who are these Ghuraba? Who are these strangers? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, هُمُ الَّذِينَ يُصْلِحُونَ مَا أَفْسَدَ النَّاسُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي They are those who will rectify that which my Ummah has corrupted. In another narration we are told, هُمُ الَّذِينَ يَصْلَحُونَ إِذَا فَسَدَ النَّاسُ They are the ones who are going to be upon goodness. They are the ones who are going to be upon righteousness when the people become corrupt. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also told us in another hadith, لا يأتي زمان إلا الذي بعده شر من There doesn't come a time except that the time that comes after is far worse. We are also told in another hadith that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said من أشراط الساعة أن يقل العلم ويظهر الجهل ويظهر الزنا From the signs of the hour is that علم will become scarce. Ignorance will become so widespread. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم then said Zina, abhorrent, filthy, despicable acts will become widespread. We have also been told by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as reported by Ibn Majah Rahmatullahi Alayhi, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once said, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي عَمَلُ قَوْمِ لُوط That which I fear the most for my Ummah is the practices of the people of Lut. My dear respective brothers and sisters, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also said in another hadith, لَيَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ الْقَابِذُ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِذِ عَلَى الْجَمَرِ The holding on to your religion will become like holding on to hot coal. And without a shadow of a doubt, my beloved brothers and sisters, this is the time that we are currently living in. The time of holding on to your religion, my beloved brothers and sisters, has become so, so difficult. To the extent, to the extent, my beloved brothers and sisters, one feels extremely, extremely terrified to explain to his children basic Islamic morals and values. One feels embarrassed to speak about that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned to us clearly and explicitly in his Quran. Why is that, my beloved brothers and sisters? When we are a ummah, we became the best of umam. We became the best of nations. Why? Kuntum khayra ummatin. Ukhrijat linnaz ta'muruna bil ma'roof. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. You became from the best of nations. Why? Because you enjoined the good and you forbid the evil. You forbid the evil. Wa tu'minuna billah. And you also believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we not know, my beloved brothers and sisters, that the people of Bani Israel, they were destroyed and they were cursed simply because they kept silent about basic Islamic, or should I say, the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُدِ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمِ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ Bani Israel, they were cursed upon the tongue of Isa alayhi salatu wassalam and also Dawood alayhi salatu wassalam. Why is that my beloved brothers and sisters? We are told they were violating. كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهُونَ عَمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ They never used to forbid the evil that would be happening in front of them. They would keep silent. They would refrain from saying anything that would rock the boat. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ إِذْ يَعْدُونَ فِي السَّبْتِ إِذْ تَأْتِيهِمْ حِيْتَانُهُمْ يَوْمَ السَّبْتِهِمْ شُرَّعَا وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ لَا تَأْتِيهِمْ كَذَلِكَ نَبَلُوهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Right? The people of Sabbath, their story is very, very well known. 
they were three groups. Those who engaged in the haram. Then there was a second group. Those who remained silent. And then there was a third group. They are the ones who enjoined the good and they forbid the evil. What happened, my beloved brothers and sisters? What was the consequence of this? When they left off, that which they were reminded with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved those who were enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is not a khutbah to entice hatred and also violence against any minority group. However, why is it, my beloved brothers and sisters, that we are always on the back foot when it comes to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called perfectly natural in the Quran? We're reaching a point, brothers and sisters, that an individual feels shy to call himself heterosexual. For those who don't know what that means, it means somebody who's inclined towards the opposite gender. Someone, in other words, who's straight. He thinks thrice now, not even twice. Thrice about when he's asked about his gender. A parent feels shy to speak to his kids about this issue simply because he's terrified that he will be cancelled. That he will be looked at someone who is out of touch with reality. Right? You have some of the Christians, brothers and sisters. Christians who adhere to the Christian teachings. I'm sure many of us have heard about Jacob Rees Mogg. He is Boris Johnson's right hand man. He was invited over to the Good Morning Show, being hosted by Piers Morgan at the time. They tried to what? Get him into a lot of trouble. They kept on asking him for his own view. What are your views on same sex marriages? And just let me put it like this, brothers and sisters. We've spoken to lawyers, we've spoken to professionals. As long as you quote the scripture, nobody can write you off. Nobody can get you cancelled as long as you quote the scripture. They kept on asking him the question, what is your view? He keeps on saying, according to the Christian teachings. According to the Christian teachings. And he kept on repeating it, repeating it, repeating him, looking to get him cancelled, but it didn't happen. Why? Because he's sticking to the scripture. These are Christians, brothers and sisters. The video has over 5 million views, if I'm not mistaken. It has gone absolutely viral, right? We can take a lot of inspiration from that. Holding on to your values and your morals. You say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this. I'm not voicing my view or my opinion. It is simply what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. My brothers and my sisters, forget about saying something. Because of our silence, it is only, only a matter of time that we end up facing the same challenges as the Americans. A lot of you guys have come across videos how some of the leading Islamic figures today in America are being dragged into the ground simply because of the watered down positions that they were taking. They are either on the back foot or they are being made to have coalitions with this minority group, right? This game, my brothers and my sisters, that we might be forced to play of having to side, wallah, is not something that is going to last long. I'm sure many of us, we heard some of the incidents that took place in the last Euros. What happened in the last Euros? When Poland was playing against Germany. Poland, prior to the Euros, took a position saying, we will not teach our children anything related to these kind of things. Same-sex marriages. This is what Poland says. And also Hungary. And as long as we quote huh, that which comes out of the horse's mouth, don't worry, brothers and sisters, we are extremely safe. This is the position they took, and they're not even Muslims. They couldn't get them cancelled. They couldn't excommunicate them. They couldn't do any of these things, right? When Germany was playing against Poland, what did Germany in Munich do? They lighted up the stadium with the rainbow colors. And then you had the goalkeeper in the post-match conference rubbing his face like that because he was wearing the band of these colors. As long... As you quote the scripture, my beloved brothers and sisters, right? Nobody can get you cancelled. Nobody can attack you. Nobody can try and defame you because you are quoting the scripture. And anyone who then tries to defame the scripture, then he will be cancelled by society as is very, very well known. 
speak to lawyers, speak to every other professional who speciality is these kind of things. And this is very, very, very well known. My beloved brothers and sisters, Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he says the following, لا تستصعب مخالفة الناس والتحيز إلى الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن كنت وحدك Don't look at it as a burden Going against what the majority opinion is And siding with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Even if you are by yourself Even if you are by yourself Why? He then goes on to say فإن الله معك فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ معك. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be by your side. الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَةِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِنَّ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal, He praises those, right, who deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they don't fear anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is saying, attack anyone. No one is saying, entice Huh? hatred or violence or anything like that. We are just talking about holding on to our basic Islamic morals, right? Our values that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, has connected salvation with. It's as simple as that, right? What do you think, brothers and sisters, that Lut alayhi salatu wasalam would do? Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, what do you think he would do, brothers and sisters? And again, we are just quoting the scripture. I'm not giving my view or expressing my opinion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَخَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنْ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah tells us in the scripture, the Lord said to his people, the people that came in his time, right? أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ Are you now going to carry out some of these abhorrent practices? مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ No one preceded you in this from the time of Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve, Adam and Eve. From that point all the way till Lut alayhi salatu was sent, no one ever preceded you in this, right? وَمِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَنَا زَوْجَيْنِ Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, from everything we brought out what? Partners of male and female, right? Allah Azza wa Jalla also says in Surah Al-Naba, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا When you look in the Arabic language, Azwaj was always a woman, and likewise a man, right? Even when Allah Azza wa Jalla told Nuh to get onto the ship, what did he say to him? Huh? What did he tell him to take with him? I mean, kulli زوجين اثنين, right? زوجين اثنين From the camel, right? Make sure you take a male. And also you take a female from the sheep. Make sure you take a male and also a female, even from amongst the animals. The scripture is telling us that this was the case, brothers and sisters. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ Right? You want to carry out these practices with men when you have women at your disposal. Right, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ Indeed, you are people who transgress. What happened, brothers and sisters, when they, when Lut alayhi salatu wasalam came with this message, وَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ The response was, kick them out of the village. A little bit like what happens today, right? Cancel them. Huh? Be extremely vocal against them. Get all of the newspapers, right, to speak ill about them. And this is what we see happening today, brothers and sisters. Indeed, they are people who are pure, right? They were criminalized for being pure. They were criminalized for being pro, brothers and sisters, right? And then Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, we ended up saving Lot and those who followed him. But those that were excluded from amongst them was his wife. Even though she wasn't directly practicing that which the people of Lot were engaging in. Shaykh al-Islam Taymi rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, 
عَمَلَ قَوْمٍ حُشِّرَ مَعَهُمْ Whoever is now pleased with what certain people are doing, right? Then indeed, he will be resurrected with them. He will be from amongst them. And then he gives the example of Imra'atul Lut. She never engaged in that. However, she was with the program. She sided with them. And because of that, the adab came and he ended up taking everyone who either engaged in it or was pleased with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَيَا قَوْمِ لَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شِقَاقِي أَنْ يُصِيبَكُمْ مِثْلُ مَا أَصَابَ قَوْمَ نُوحٍ أَوْ قَوْمَ هُودٍ أَوْ قَوْمَ صَالِحٍ وَمَا قَوْمُ لُوطٍ مِنْكُمْ بِبَعِيدٍ Right? لَا يَحْمِلَنَّكُمْ يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ means وَيَا قَوْمِ لَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ أي لا يحملنكم شِقَاقِي أي خِلَافِي Don't let the fact that me and you are at a difference of opinion think that you will not be afflicted with what all of these people whose prophets were sent to them, right? Nuh alayhi salatu salam, we know what happened, right? Al-Gharq, we know what happened with Hud, we know what happened with Thamud, right? All of these different people that had prophets sent to them. Shu'ayb is saying to them, وَمَا قَوْمُ لُوْطٍ مِنْكُمْ بِبَعِيدٍ Because they weren't far from them, right? The same could happen, my brothers and my sisters, because of us being silent, and not being vocal about our beliefs and our morals and our values, right? What do you think the outcome will be? If they were destroyed for set sins, set sins, we are living in a time where we have just about every baliya that was mentioned to us in the Quran. Maybe a fraud of these dhunub, they were destroyed for, right? أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى المجتبى My dear respective brothers and sisters A statement that from time to time really terrifies me is the statement of Ibn Qudama rahmatullahi alayhi when he said وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ إِنَّمَا هَلَكُوا لِخَوْفِ مَذَمَّةِ النَّاسِ He says no, that the majority of the people Right? They were destroyed because of what they feared. What did they fear? Being criticized, being cancelled. And also loving their praise. Sometimes it may well be, my beloved brothers and sisters, that we try to please the people. And on the way to pleasing them, we disobey. Al Maliku Dayyan. Al Maliku Dayyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasarat, look what he says. Harakatuhum. كلها على ما يوافق رضا الناس. Everything that they done, every step that they took, and every move that they made, it was always in accordance to what pleases the people and what is in accordance to their what, ah, their desires. رجاء المدح وخوفا من الذم, hoping to be praised and out of fear of being criticized. فذلك من المهلكات فوجبت معالجته. Indeed. These are from the things, my brothers and my sisters, that will get you destroyed. And it is a must that we treat this. Ibn Qudama rahmatullahi alayhi mentions. My brothers and my sisters, how do we expect to be raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we expect salvation, right? When we let go of some of these morals, right? Sometimes we try to please the creation. And I'm sure a lot of us have heard of that hadith, right? We try to please the people. We disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens? سَخِطَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَسْخَطَ عَنْهُ النَّاسِ Allah will become angry with that individual and He will make the people angry with that person as well. A very touching statement of Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi. He says, عَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ يَتَصَنَّعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَيَرْجُعَ التَّقَرُّبَ مِنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ It amazes me how an individual, he does things for the people. He hopes to get closer to their hearts. وَيَنْسَى أَنَّ قُلُوبَهُمْ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ And he forgets that the hearts of the people are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're trying to please them, but you disobey Allah. Did you forget 
that their hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said a very, very powerful statement. Nahnu ummatun a'azzana Allahu bil Islam. We are a people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored with al Islam. Wa mahma abtagayna ghayra al Islami adallana Allah. And the moment we desire any of these other practices, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed humiliate us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed humiliate us. My beloved brothers and sisters, I want to conclude this khutbah with that which relates to love is love. One of the arguments that we keep on hearing is, listen, love is love, right? Love is love. There is this discussion that happens from time to time amongst the atheists themselves and also when a non-atheist is debating with an atheist. And likewise, when a discussion now takes place between someone who's heterosexual and somebody who's not, the concept of morality. What is actually considered moral and what is not, right? You may have noticed, my brothers and my sisters, as time went on, right? If you look at what was seen as moral, maybe a hundred years ago, is seen something completely different today, or that which was considered immoral previously, today is what considered moral. So who actually determines what is morality, or a good one and a bad one? even amongst the atheists. And this is one of the causes of them apostating from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This whole aspect of morality, right? Even amongst themselves, they are differing with one another. When the discussion breaks out that some, they see killing to be moral. They see it to be a good thing. And for those who don't know what morality means, that which society sees as acceptable, right? They see certain things to be what? Acceptable. Others don't. Today, you see people in their cultures, killings to be acceptable. And other things that are shunned and looked down upon in society as what? As acceptable. So who actually determines that? Without a shadow of a doubt, the simple answer is that we need an external entity. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's going to govern us with a sharia. Because look at wheat for example, right? There was a time when it was banned in just about every state in America. As time went on, some states now see it to be perfectly fine, right? And likewise, abortion and so many other things. Having said all of that, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the UK, maybe over 300 years ago, and likewise, 200 years, and then 100 years, right? Some of the things that we've spoken about today, in the UK, it was seen as immoral. Who did I hear this from? A BBC reporter. And I'm sure many of you guys have seen this video going around. And then eventually it was taken down from YouTube. A BBC reporter sitting in a studio in the UK many, many years ago, right? Began to speak about how he came across an individual who wanted to make hijra. This is many decades ago. He wanted to make hijra from the UK. Why? He said because of homosexuality. And then he asked him, what do you mean by this? And then he said, 300 years ago, if you done this, then the punishment would be this. 200 years ago, it would be this. 100 years, like he said, okay, why are you leaving now? He said, I'm leaving before it becomes mandatory. And then everybody in the studio starts laughing. Point of the matter is, my brothers and my sisters, I really, really want to read this out, inshallah ta'ala. That which might be seen today as immoral, may be seen tomorrow as moral. There's an interview that I came across my beloved brothers and sisters where a man called Todd Nickerson is being what? Interviewed. He's a nobody. But I'll tell you guys exactly who he is. He says right at the beginning of the interview, I am a non-offending pedophile. I'll say that again. I am a non-offending pedophile. I am part of one of the most hated groups of society. This is in America, by the way, right? This is an interview that was taking place. We are seen as the scapegoats. I am campaigning. Just like this minority we spoke about today was campaigning maybe a decade ago. I am campaigning for better treatment for people like me who are non-offending pedophiles. Then look what he says. Most people when they see someone that they are attracted to, do they automatically think 
I want to jump on them and then engage in sexual practices, meaning no, I don't. And because of that, the same applies to us. When we see someone that we're attracted to, like a young child, we are attracted to young children, he's saying, we don't automatically think that, oh, you know what, I want to go and do X, Y, and Z with them. We just happen to be attracted to kids. This video that I just spoke about, my brothers and my sisters, is talking about homosexuality becoming mandatory. That BBC uh, host who was speaking about whatever he said. Except that this time, my beloved brothers and sisters, what we really, really fear is that pedophilia will become mandatory as well. Are we going to wait before...